From its beginnings, Utah has been a place of connection. As travel has moved from the rails to the sky, a new golden spike has been placed at the Salt Lake City International Airport. The Salt Lake City International Airport is a boost to the entire state. Many people would think of it as the, the gateway to our state. Anyone traveling to or from the Intermountain West is inevitably coming in and out of Salt Lake International. We're uh, very convenient. We're on the way to everywhere. The airport, therefore, is, I think, a really important part of families and individuals' personal histories. It's part of the stories we tell, and it's a place where people can get to and come together to welcome people back home. We had some very visionary people out there who said, we have the potential. Let's modernize our airport and make sure we can accommodate the future as we welcome the world to Utah. Say hello to the new SLC. In the early 1900s, aviation began to expand across the United States. And in 1920, Salt Lake City leaders began looking for a place where planes delivering airmail could land. They selected a barren, marshy piece of ground west of town and named it Woodward Field. So the choice of this particular place for the airport in 1920 was a good one because nobody wanted to live out there. And at the time, 1920, that was miles from town. Being away from town allowed the airport plenty of room to expand. By the 1930s, there were thousands of passengers flying in and out of Salt Lake City each year. In 1933, the city built an administration building for the airport, and it was used as the first terminal. In the late 50s and early 60s, the airport was enlarged, runways were improved, and a new terminal was constructed, what we know today as Terminal 1. And that was really kind of the, the essential configuration of the airport up until the current day. Over the years, Utah has experienced economic booms, population growth, increased tourism, and has hosted the Winter Olympics. All this has led to a dramatic increase in airline travelers and caused the current airport to exceed capacity. Things needed to change. The Salt Lake Airport's been a great airport for 50 years. However, it was built with a 1960s mindset. Fortunately, Salt Lake uh, International has enough land to actually build a brand new airport in place. A lot of what the airports of the 1960s were designed to was to bring people into the lobby areas so that they could sit and, and look at the wonder of flight. Security wasn't an issue. It would take five minutes to get on board the airplane and off they go. Today, it needs to be flipped all around. The new consolidated security area will have much improved features and will provide a better experience for passengers. It will use the latest technology to efficiently help passengers get through security and onto their gates. At the gate, passengers can relax at one of the over 5,000 new seats, plug into any one of the many charging stations, shop at local and national retailers, dine at one of the great restaurants, or just enjoy the scenery. The comfort and the experience, whether you're going through TSA or you have the time to sit down, is going to be unmatched from any other airport. Getting from the plane uh, to the gate, to your luggage, to your car and on your way, and then that process working in reverse, they'll just be greatly enhanced with this, uh, the new airport and the new design. Strong buildings are built on strong foundations. And since a major fault line is nearby, the new SLC is built to withstand a major seismic event. One feature of the new facility is that it's built to very, very high uh, standards. And so we did have an earthquake. At 7.09 this morning, a 5.7 earthquake hit. To experience a 5.7 earthquake as we did on March 18th of 2020 underscored the need for a seismically safe building for all of the people coming through this international airport. A major seismic event and the current airport would not be uh, usable at all. 
Uh, we had a fairly substantial water line break in concourse D, and that is in the process of being repaired. We were closed for about six hours or so, but then up and running again. Here, there was no damage. After the foundations were poured, next came the task of building the new airport while the old airport remained open. We decided that we would build our new airport on top of our existing airport, kind of like building a house on top of your house while you're living in it. Construction crews decided to build the South Concourse, Concourse A, one half at a time, building the first half on the west side, tear down the existing structures, then build the second half on the east side. There'll be concourses that are south with an east and west wing, and then also a north concourse, new roadway systems, as well as a new central utility plant. It'll be a beautiful airport that reflects the surroundings of Utah, uh, taking in some of the natural beauties and helping blend the airport with that natural beauty and uh, reflect the great things we have in this state. With the foundations laid and the groundwork complete, structures began to rise. Designers wanted these terminals to leave an impression on travelers, so they incorporated colors and features to highlight the natural beauty of Utah. They'll come in through this venue that has a sense of place. Lots of local art, lots of amazing features and the architecture of the uh, airport that enhances that sense of place. We're building temples to transportation. This, this is the new Notre Dame's. That's what we're doing here. So we have this major thoroughfare called the Canyon with this Canyon art installation. There's another feature called the Falls. It's dichronic glass, and so the sun will refract off of it. It's a beautiful 80-foot long piece. Utah is known across the world for its beauty and grandeur, and, and we wanted an airport that would add to it and match the, the boundless beauty of this incredible state. When you walk off the jetway and you come into that main arrival hall and you see those huge windows and our massive, incredible mountains uh, as they spread out to the north, that's gonna tell people, hey, you're here to ski. One of the things we're gonna do with the new Sky Club is we're gonna have an outdoor uh, covered space so customers can go outside and take in the views of the mountains. The colors and the textures and the light and the views are going to be absolutely extraordinary, really stunning. The whole idea is to be an experience like you've never ever had in an airport. You know you're in Salt Lake City when you land in this airport. The art and design of the new SLC is not just to be enjoyed by travelers, but also by local residents who come to the airport for reunions and farewells as we see welcome home parties in the Salt Lake International Airport like you'll never see anywhere else. And the notion and thought that it's gonna be a warm, comfortable, celebratory setting for those reunions just warms my heart. I don't think you can overstate the idea of convenience when it comes to the Salt Lake City, Utah Airport. It's in a metropolitan area, it's a hub, it's close to 11,000 foot peaks. Few other capital cities in the country have an international airport so close to the downtown core, let alone the proximity to all of the ski resorts and other amazing natural assets that people come here to experience. It's just the perfect location for an airport of its caliber. We have become famous for our Red Rock country, uh, the Mighty Five National Parks. If you're a skier, you know you've got to experience Utah. We have 11 resorts within an hour of the airport, 500 inches annually of the lightest, driest, best snow in the world. So these folks that are visiting are essentially helping fund our restaurants, our attractions, our roads, our health care. So it's a wonderful setup. The more that you can do to accommodate the traveling public and make it convenient, the more tourism there's going to be and the better it's going to be for the state and all the businesses here.
I believe that we are on the threshold of incredible opportunities that most people in Utah never dreamed about in the past, but which are going to be part of our reality in the future. Not only does the new airport help the tourism industry, but it also helps boost the state's economy. The airport reconstruction is the largest public works project in the history of the state and has created numerous jobs. There are tens of thousands of people who work at the airport. They either work for the airport, they work for the airlines, or they work for the businesses that are related to the airport. All of those wages are paying Utah families and then being redistributed in the economy particularly in the context of the pandemic and the economic crisis that has ensued. Keeping those dollars here in our local economy goes even farther to supporting our recovery in the months and years to come. The folks that are doing this work are incredible professionals, all the way from the engineers to the guys laying, the, laying out the cement. It has just been a remarkable progress. The entire team working on this project is best in class. The numbers I've looked at would suggest that the times there's 1,700 workers there on site, you know, building uh, this incredible asset for our state. To be able to bring a project like this in uh, on time and on budget uh, is really a, a testament to the people who've been on the ground doing this work the whole time. They're very proud of what they're building, uh, and we try and remind them of that every day, that they're building something that you know, their children and grandchildren and everybody are going to be uh, enamored with. It's a satisfying event to uh, be able to see all those different pieces coming together that we've been planning over the last four years. You look at the whole project uh, in every aspect, the exteriors, the interiors, the size of the structure, the building, the roadways, everything about this is, is just cool. I'm looking forward to being able to walk away from this thing years from now and a, a testament to all the hard work and dedication of all the employees on site. If you run a safe, clean job, you got great flow and efficiency, and then you have great quality. You gotta take pride in what you do, right? And it's an exciting place to be right now and very thrilled to be part of the, the crew. Uh, we have 4,500 employees here in Salt Lake and the surrounding area that call this home. We love being Salt Lake City's hometown airline. It really launched Delta into the western half of, the, uh, of this country. Delta brings people to us from all over the world. It really is the heart of what makes us an international place. We want to be seen as not just a great airline, we want to be seen as a great member of the local community. We spent a lot of years in the making of That's huh? right, yes. Residents of Utah should be proud that the airport is being completed on time and on budget, and the finances have been managed wisely. And amazingly, none of the local citizens are footing that bill. It'll be done through user fees and revenue bonds and other mechanisms, and that speaks to the uh, fiscal prudent nature of our community and our state. Thank you to everyone who's worked so hard to make this dream become a reality. This is a once in a generation project, and it's something we, I hope we can all be proud of for generations to come. It's going to be famous from the day it opens. Every time I'm out at the airport and I've seen that thing being built, I just get so excited. Uh, this kind of new beginning and new chapter for Salt Lake City and for the state of Utah. We are growing and thriving and investing in the future. And I think that's such a positive message for Salt Lake City to share with the world. And now this is a new milestone, a milestone that we will look back upon uh, in our future and think this was another great leap forward for the state of Utah to be a crossroads of the world. It's only the beginning. Say hello to the new SLC.